Malachi chapter number 3, verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger. How's that? Huh? Isn't that good? I like that. Isn't that? I love it. I got to write that down. I missed the simplest little thing. Amen. He's a messenger. Uh, he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come into his temple. That sounds really good. Amen. Even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, say the Lord of hosts. Mm. Hey, that's pretty good. Uh, let's go to Matthew chapter number three. Matthew chapter number three. It said this messenger was coming. He's going to prepare the way of the Lord. Isn't that neat? Matthew chapter number three. Verse one. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 400 years of silence. Well, 394, so we just rounded off to 400. <clears throat> when Malachi was written, that was stated, all of a sudden there's a silent period. God ain't spoke. Now you got a bunch of other junk that transpired in history through there, but God ain't speaking. And all of a sudden, Israel's under Roman bondage, amen? And a man steps out on the stormy banks of Jordan and he goes, Repent ye! First voice that they hear from God. What was the first thing the man said? Repent! You know what people need to hear today? Repent ye! Personally, you, amen? Looking at me, you, <laughs> Right? Amen. We all need to repent. That's missing today in today's preaching. People don't believe repentance needs preached. I'm telling you, we need repentance more than we ever needed repentance preached. And it's being preached less and less and less. And who was the man that stepped up and preached on repentance? John who? The Catholic. Huh? The Pentecostal. The Lutheran. The Baptist, Baptist preachers today are quitting preaching repentance. People don't want to hear repentance. Well, they think maybe the rioting crowd needs repentance. Well, our churches need repentance. And maybe if our churches had repentance, maybe they wouldn't be rioting in the streets. Yeah, man. I'd like to say this. Dan Metter said this. I like it. He said uh, not only was he a Baptist preacher, but he was an independent Baptist preacher. <laughs> Amen. That's not saying much today. A lot of independent Baptist preachers out there ain't worth shooting. They're Bible correctors. They're compromisers. Amen. They don't believe in repentance anymore. Amen. Listen, you can repent all day long, die and go to hell. It's repentance toward God and faith and toward the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants you to change your mind about your sin. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But notice what it says. He said, repent ye for... The kingdom of what? Heaven. He's talking about a physical earthly kingdom. He said, what's he saying? He's ten and a half years away from the kingdom. He's coming out. He's preparing the way for the Lord. He's got his plow deep in the ground and he's plowing up the soil. He's making his rows straight. He's trying to get people to get right with God. Right? Why? Because when Jesus Christ shows up and he dies, they're seven years away from the millennial reign when Christ dies. That's how close they are to the kingdom. The kingdom was at hand right there. It was within 10 years. Can I tell you this? You're probably within 10 years of the second advent of Jesus, or not the advent, but the rapture of Jesus Christ. That's close. You say, how do you know? Well, 2033 is 2,000-year church age. Minus seven years puts 2026. 
Four years off on the calendar. Could be 2022. We're awful close to the Lord checking us out of here. The way America's falling apart. Hey, you ain't seen nothing yet. You think that's something out there? You just wait till November 2020, and if they say Donald Trump's the next president, they're going to burn every city down. America's going to disappear. And, and can I tell you this? If Joe Biden makes it, they'll burn cities down. Hello? Because they're going to see that they're getting their way and they're going to do whatever they want to do and they'll throw a tantrum, whatever they want. Listen, they want to disband police stations and police departments. What are they doing? They're saying, we want to get away with whatever we want to do and do it however we want to do. We want a land with no laws, no arrests, no jails. We'll do whatever we want to do. Well, where's that found in the Bible? Where's it at? I'll give it to you. Come on, show me. All right, you won't show me, I'll show you. Jer Judges chapter 21, huh? Judges chapter 21. Judges 21, verse 25. It'll tell you where we're heading. Right? Every man did that, which is what? Right in his own eyes. Why? Because there is no king in the land. You know what they did? They kicked the king out years ago. And now every man wants to do what's right in his own eyes. We're living in a society today that does not want God Almighty as king. They don't want his word as king. They don't want him to reign as king. Right? Now watch this. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8, listen, I'm just giving you the temperature of the land out there, right? 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 1, And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second was Abiah, and, and they were judges in Beersheba, and his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, money, and took bribes. It sounds like a bunch of our judges today. And perverted judgment. It means what they do. They made the decision according to how much people paid them. They let people off the hook, not because they did wrong, but because they lined their pockets. Right? That's what's going on in Washington, D.C. with your senators and congressmen. And people go down there and they got all those people lobbying for them and they're big businessmen paying out money for them to devise laws and make business favorable to them. Crooked. Why? Well, then all the elders of Israel came together or gathered themselves together and came to Samuel on the Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, my sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a what? a king to judge us like all the nations. You know what America wants? They, they're not telling you, but they want a king. You know what kind of king they want? Huh? Huh? No, they, 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 want, a, they want a King James like LeBron, right? Right? They want a Nat King Cole. Right? They want a Martin Luther king. Right? That's what they want. They're going to get one. You're going to get a black king reigning over this land and it ain't going to be good because the worst oppressor of blacks is a black man. Right? Amen. I'm telling you something. They, they, look at all the liberal cities that's got black leaders and look at those cities falling to pieces and they're blaming the white men for what the black men are leading and doing. They're not satisfied. They'll burn their own neighborhoods down. They'll, they're, they're just throwing tantrums all the time. Look at them in Africa, chunking spears at each other, cooking each other in cauldrons, casting spells and demonic activity. Look at over there at Haiti, fully given over to the devil. They said, we don't want Jesus Christ here in our land. We serve the devil. That's their constitution. Right? Amen. It's good. Listen, they're going to get a king, and they ain't going to like the king they get. 
Guess what? The devil's going to come, and guess what? He's part Hamite, and he's going to rule this land. He's going to have a king, and he's going to put him under their thumb, and he's going to be an oppressor, and he's going to grind him into powder. And you talk about a military police state. These people think they want to be under communism. They ain't lived under communism. They think capitalism's bad. Wait till they start working for pennies and got to work 16 hours days and stay in the factories and do what they got to do. Listen, they think slavery. And over there in China, they'll cut your head off, put you in a concentration camp, kill you quicker than you can blink an eye. They ain't tolerating it. And you think you're going to get away. What do they think America's going to be? America's got to go down, folks, and it's going down, and the holes are just filling the boat full of holes. Right? That's the solution, right? We're riding it, but boat's got water in it. Okay, open fire. <laughs> and they're just shooting a boat full of holes. That's their solution, and none of them know how to swim, and now they're yelling at people. How come we don't have enough lifeboats? <laughs> Right? That's what the Democrats are doing. They're shooting holes in the lifeboats. Amen? They're, they're just crazy. They're out of their mind. They're insane. Lester Roloff said it years ago. That it's the inmates running the asylum. Amen? Look at what it says. They're going to get a king. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. We just want to be like everybody else. We hate God. We hate Christianity. We want to be like everybody else. What do you mean? You want full-blown sin. You just want all the sin you want to get with no consequences to it, and you don't want to hear there's a consequence to your sin, right? Verse 6, but Samuel, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the uh, people and all uh, that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should reign over them according to all the works which they have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherein they have forsaken me and served other gods, and do so also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet test protest solemnly unto them. There's a biblical protest. (laughs) Said who's protesting? God's man's protesting to the people. Right? Amen. What's happening out there? You got people out there thumbing their nose at God in our country, right? Saying, we're not going to have these people rule over us. We don't like the nation you gave us. We don't like the laws and commandments you give us. We want to do what we want to do, and they're going to overthrow. It's anarchy. Well, when you reject the book, right? You reject God's son. You reject God's church. You reject God's grace. What else are you going to have? Apostasy, apathy, anarchy, right? Amen. You're seeing the fruits of it right now. Those, that's monkey men. You know what they're doing? They're, they come back to the jungle. I got a sign on my refrigerator that says back to the jungle or back to the Bible or back to the jungle. Right? Verse 10, the same told all the words of the people that asked of, a king, of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that shall reign over. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself and his chariots to be his horsemen, and some shall run before his chariots, and he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground and reap his harvest and make instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and be bakers, and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, yet the best of them, even the best of them, and give them to his servants, and he will take a tenth of your seed and your vineyards and, and give you... Give to his officers and his servants, and he will take your men servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to work, and he will take a tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be his servants, and ye shall cry out in that day because your king, uh, ye have ch- which ye have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. He said, all right, I'll give you what you want. And when I give you what you want, you ain't going to like it. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to cry out to me, says God Almighty. And God said, I ain't answering. You know what he's saying? You made your bed, sleep in it. Right? Well, I'll tell you what, that's a dangerous place for America to be in. One day they're going to be on their face begging God for help. And God said, that's what you wanted. Suck it up, boy. There ain't going to be no answer from heaven. And they're going to be crying, why ain't God hearing me? 
Why ain't God giving me what I want? And that what Luther, Luther, uh, Lucifer said? I will exalt myself above the throne of God. Right? God, it can't handle that kind of pride. Verse 19, nevertheless, the people what? Refuse to obey the voice of Trump. Huh? Samuel, the man of God. They rejected the man of God. And they said, nay, but we will have a king over us so that we may be like all the nations. We just could be like everybody else. See, that's what a rebellion, a rebel does. That's what children tell their parents. You ain't going to tell us what to do. We're going to go out there and we're going to be like every other kid in the school. We're going to be dumb and stupid and idiots. And we're going to lose our purity and we're going to cuss and we're going to drink and we're going to get high and we're going to get cancer by smoking. And, and we're just going to tell all kinds of filthy jokes and dirty words. And we're just going to be as filthy as we can be because we just want to be a pig that wallers in mud. Oh, that's real smart. You don't want to be a good, upstanding, respectable person, do you? Right? <laughs> Follow the gang, man. You'll go over the hill. Right? It takes a live fish to swim against the current. Anybody can float downstream with all the trash. It takes guts and courage to go against the grain. Amen. That's what John, listen. It, well, they wanted a king. And uh, they're going to get one. Let's go back to Matthew. Cry and repent. How did I get off on that? The kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. They want to, uh, listen, he said repent for the kingdom of heaven's in hand. They said we don't want a kingdom where God Almighty rules over us. We want a kingdom where men rule over us to give us all. Listen, all they want is Las Vegas on steroids. They want free drugs, free brews, free sex, no consequences to anything. They even want murder to be free. Right? That's what the whole movie The Purge is about. Right? And then they got the Purge 2016 election year. You see, what is that? They suspend all laws for 24 hours. You can go do whatever you want to do. Even murder is legal. Just go do it. They want to do that. Do you know a book in the Bible that promoted that? The book of Esther. The, Haman had them sign a law and that they would kill all the Jews. They had a certain day that they chose that they would, they would genocide all the Jews. They would exterminate them. They throughout all the providences of the world, they would kill and exterminate the Jews. Isn't that amazing? And then Esther went in there and had that law overturned that the Jews could defend themselves and the Jews defended themselves and killed a bunch of people. And now they got a celebration uh, annually that they celebrate about that rule over there in the book of Esther. Right? Amen. The world wants to exterminate Christianity. Guess what the world's going to do? They're going to exterminate people that stand for God coming soon to a guillotine near you. Right? I saw them that were beheaded for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. This world is like a ravening uh, rabid dog out there or an animal. They, they're foaming at the mouth. They hate God. They hate Christianity. And next thing, the only thing standing in their way right now is a Bible-believing Christian from having their way. It's the religious right. Don't you know we're always the problem? Right? Amen. Hey, listen, they've already removed prayer out of school, the Bible out of school, the Ten Commandments out of school. Amen. They got Christians to silence their mouth that they won't witness and tell others about Jesus Christ. But we're still a thorn in their side. So God needs to hurry up and send a rapture and get us out of here. And then they can have a whole world without light. Wouldn't that be good? Kingdom of heaven's at hand, verse 3, and he's... And this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Amen. You know what the last thing men want to preach today is straight preachers. Straight preaching. Amen. Here's a straight line. You know why they don't want something straight laid down beside them? Because then they see how crooked they are. Amen. When you get right with God, you're a condemnation to your family. When you're wicked, living in sin, and rolling in the muck and the mire, they sit back and they polish your halo. They say, man, we're not as bad as Rob. Boy, look at old Rob. He's a wicked sinner, man. He's bad, ain't he? At least we're not as bad as him. Rob gets right, and all of a sudden, you got a measuring line. They say, we ain't doing right. He's making us look bad. Right? 
Let's turn to Amos. He said, what are you doing? I told you it was a tossed salad. I'm just tossing it up. Book Amos. Look at what he says in verse 10, 510. They hate him that rebuketh where? In the gate. And they abhor him that speaketh what? They hate preaching. They hate street preachers. If you could have heard some of the words I was called yesterday, if you could have seen the looks on people's faces as we stood out there on the street corners, I'm telling you, people hate, hate preaching. They hate it. They're paying preachers good money not to preach to them straight. There's people that won't come in here and sit down here because they're going to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Amen. They want to be lied to. What do they want? They want somebody to preach after their own lust tickling their ears. Right? Let's go back to Matthew. I don't know how I'm going to get to my points. Amen. Matthew chapter 3. But see, they hate preaching. They hate it. They can't stand it. They can't stand the truth. That's where we're living. We're living in a volatile society that cannot stand the truth. Prepare ye the way, Lord, make his path straight. The same John had his raiment and camel's hair and his leather girdle about his loins and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were baptized of him in Jordan confessing their sins. But when, many, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto him, Oh, I'm so glad to see such religious people like you show up today. Huh? He's seen those false, wicked rulers and leaders. It'd be like me seeing Buddhist leaders and Catholic priests and the Pope and all of them walk up, and then you're supposed to be real nice and respectable when you're Jesus named Christianity, right? He said, Why well, are you vipers? Right? He pointed right at him and said, Hey, folks, may I have your attention, please? Look at those snakes right there. That's some good preaching, huh? I bet he, bet he packed his congregation full of good people, huh? Wasn't he so kind? Wasn't he so kind to say that? Right? Ain't that what he said? Oh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee the wrath to come? He's three and a half years away from the judgment of God, the time of Daniel's 70th week, the wrath of God fallen on this land. You understand? He's warning them. You think they're interested? Look what he says. Bring forth meat, or uh, fruits, meat for repentance. He's crying out repentance again. He said, hey, bring forth meat. Or fruits, meat for repentance. That means right, worthy of repentance, right. He says, what's he saying? I want to see some real evidence of you turn into God, boy. That's what he said, right? That's what he's saying. Here, there comes a bunch of people pretending to be right with God. And he knew they were as crooked as a snake. And he wanted to see some real fruit. You say you want to get right with God, prove it. Let's see the evidence. Boy, people don't want to see evidence today, do they? They want you just to believe, well, uh, I said a little prayer, but I'm just going to continue my wicked ways, and I'm not going to change one bit. I just love God, want to go to heaven, but I want all my sin too. No evidence of a changed life, no, no proof. There ought to be some evidence that God moved in. Say, how? Holiness. There ought to be a spark of holiness in people's lives. All of a sudden, things that they were doing ought to all of a sudden become dirty and wrong. Maybe words that they're saying out of their mouth they ought to have a conviction about. Maybe smoke blowing out their ears and nose uh, uh, ought, to, ought to alarm them. And the Lord said, I don't want that junk in my body. Amen. I, maybe, maybe the things they're watching on television, all of a sudden they go, I can't believe that and shut it off. Maybe magazines and things they're looking at ought to be thrown in a trash can. Maybe they ought to go to the refrigerator and start clearing out a bunch of junk that don't belong there. 
right? Maybe they ought to go to their closet and say, God, uh, none of this uh, that I wear is becoming, as a Christian, I need a whole new wardrobe. No, no evidence. Well, we're just going to go do whatever we want to do, and we're just going to slide the shoe and dance with you, amen? Right? No changes going on in people's lives. They're really sorry for their sin. Well, preachers ain't preaching on sin. Well, I'll back up. I apologize. Verse 9, and you think to say within yourselves, he knows what they're doing. He knows what they're thinking. They're saying, we have Abraham to our father. They think because Abraham's their father, they got a spiritual legacy that somehow that makes them right with God because they were born physically right. They got a good pedigree. They were born of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And now because we're one of those three, we're in, we're, lot, we're good with God because our great, 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 great granddaddy was right with God. So, so you're born into a religion, big deal. There's a bunch of kids born into a Baptist church, got Baptist parents are going to split hell wide open. You say, why? Because you can't get to heaven on mom and daddy's relationship with God. Right? Got to get in on your own relationship. For I say unto you, God is able of these stones to raise up children on Abraham. What stones are you talking about? Huh? No, there's specific stones right here. Plural. You remember? They come out of land of, they come out of Egypt, right? So they come out of Egypt. They go through Moab and they come up through Edom and they come up through Edom and they come over and there's the Jordan River. And now they're on the east side, the west side or the east side of Jordan River, right? And now they're going to cross over and Joshua's there ready to take them into the promised land, right? And so they grab the ark and they walk into the water of Jordan and the water of Jordan splits. And they take 12 stones and they put them where those guys stood with the ark into the water. And then up on the other side, they put 12 stones on the west side of the bank up there to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So they got them in the water and they got 12, a pile of rocks there. It represents Israel. When they come up out of Jordan, they came up out of Egypt. And he's pointing to them stones. That's where he's preaching at. He said, these stones right here, these stones, God's able to raise up children out of those stones. Right? Remember that book of Joshua? Amen. He's, he's showing them history. And he goes, you think you're something? You think you got a pedigree? He said, God can take these pile of rocks right here, bud, and make a child if he wants to out of them. Who do you think you are? <laughs> he's slapping them. Right? How would you like to be compared to a rock? Does that offend you? Well, it doesn't offend anybody in the public schools, does it? Because that's where they told you you came from. <laughs> right? Don't you love how God says things? For I send you, God is able to, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and what? He said, you ain't got no good fruit. We're going to chop you down, put you in hell, boy. What an attitude. You see, now, see, he's not Joel Osteen, is he? You'd never hear Joel Osteen said that, would you? Huh? Would Joel Osteen say that? Right? Amen. Surely Paula White would talk like that, right? Oh, I mean, I understand. Amen. Joyce Myers, she's so sweet, isn't she? I mean, God's perfect representation of a man preaching, right? Amen. He's preaching on hell. Watch this. I indeed baptize you with water on the repentance. One. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. Two. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Two. And, and with fire. Three. Whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into garner, but he will burn up the chaff with what? Unquenchable fire. He preached on hell. Amen. Let's, let's get out of there and let's go to John. John chapter 1. I'm just giving you an introduction and then we'll give you the message later. John chapter 1. 
There's so much about John all the way through this. Amen. Just depends on what author you're reading. Verse 5. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God. That's what America needs today. Let me ask you a question. You praying about that man? Have you prayed for that man? Have you asked God to, for a man? Say, God, we need a man sent from you to reach our nation. Who is it? I don't know. I've prayed for him. I've begged God for him. If Franklin Graham's the man, I hope he stands up and says so. But who's the man? Who's the man that's going to stand up and cry loud that our nation's going to hear? I didn't say men. I said man. There was a man sent from God. Who's the man? We need to find, God needs to find a man. We need a man in these hours that will stand up with the power and the touch of God on him and cry so loud and shake our nation inside and out. We need a man, not Rush Limbaugh. Right? Not Sean Hannity, not Tucker Carlson, not Alex Jones. We need a man of God. Amen? Amen. That's got something on him that other men ain't got. We got a lot of preachers in our land, and there's a lot of great preachers. And I know preachers as personally as fasted over 40 days and 40 nights trying to get God's power on them, done it multiple times, and when they preach, they got God's touch. But this world ain't listening to them. But when they go to some meetings, men will pack out to hear men like Doug Fisher and Danny Farley and, and David Peacock and other. I mean, those are great men of God. I'm not against them. There's men that are ringleaders. Brother Esep was a ringleader. Ruckman was a ringleader. Amen. Jack, J. Frank Norris was a ringleader. They, they run a ring and, and men would gather around him. Jack Hiles was a ringleader. They had a group of men that would fall and listen to him. But listen, America needs a man and it's not Billy Graham. Besides, he's dead and he's a compromise. Right? But we need a man. God sent a man. You need to pray for a man. God to raise up a man. Is it Dax Tolby? Amen. That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? Our, our country needs to hear from God. We need a man. We need God to send a man. Verse 6. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. Is that you? <laughs> He's going to show up in an F-22. <laughs> He'll be throwing tracks out over the nation. <laughs> and the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. I mean, John was a witness. What did Jesus tell the 12 apostles over there? Well, he actually told the, told the 11 in Acts 1-8. He said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come unto you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. Right? We're to be witnesses of that light. But we need a man. But not only do we need a man, we need men. But what this world wants to hear today is not what God wants them to hear. Right? God would tell them to submit to their authorities not rebel against their authorities. God will tell them to get out and work hard. Well, let's see what God said. Let's go to Luke chapter number 3. Was John sent from God? He was? You're kidding me. Look, look at what he says. Verse 10, John th or Luke 3.10. Luke 3.10. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? Right? And he answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. Oh, you don't mean for me to build bigger closets and go to the stores and put more coats in there and more shoes in there and more blouses in there and more skirts in there and more junk in there? You mean you don't want me hoarding up all this stuff? You want me to share my stuff? Right? He said, hey, you got two coats, give one away. Boy, what new doctrine is this? 
What's the problem out there? Hey, man, that's kind of rough preaching, ain't it? He said, let him that impart to him that hath none. He that hath meat, let him do what? You sharing your food? You sharing your clothes? You sharing your food? Well, stinking bomb, you don't work, you don't eat. Yeah, but there's hungry people out there. You feeding them? So, well, there's a lazy bum that want to get a job. Maybe you don't. But are we feeding them? There's food places. We take people. We took a guy to a food bank. He got mad and gave us half the food because he didn't like what they had in the pantry. Right? Well, I guess you're not hungry. Right? You're hungry, you'll eat a can of pork and beans, sit down there, kite nice and cold. Who cares? Right? You're hungry. And you'll be thankful you had a can of pork and beans if you're hungry. Right? Amen. Listen, this, what are they throwing a tantrum for? This is what the man of God, a man sent from God. The Bible said there's none born greater of a woman than John the Baptist. Right? And he said he's a prophet of the highest. And here's now God's man steps out. What's he got to say? You got too much. Share it with somebody else. You got too much food. Feed somebody else. Boy, what a message. You think this world will be satisfied with that? We're only satisfied with that. They want more. You know what all those big businessmen want? They want you to buy more and more and more. They want to sell you stuff that breaks down so you can buy more and more and more and more and more. And you know what they want? You know what Obama did? He, wants, he wanted to outlaw cars after like eight or ten years old. Why? So there's no used cars out on the road out there, so you have to always buy a new car. See, that's his solution. Just buy a new car. Well, who in the world can afford uh, uh, 84 month payments at $800 a month to buy a new car? That's where it's heading, folks. Right? Hey, man, they just want you to spend, 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 spend. And you got to buy Christmas, and you got to spend this money here, and you got to buy Valentine's Day, and you got to buy Sweetest Day, and you got to buy Boss's Day, and National Girl Scout Day, and National Boy Scout Day. And, and listen, it's just buy, 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 spend, spend, spend. Just take all your money. That's all they want, your money. I'm not against shh. Sharing, I'm not against giving. I'm just saying this world tries to program us into doing what they say to do, to spend our money, and they're never satisfied. Twelve. Then came also the publicans to be baptized. And he said unto them, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto that, Exact no more than what's appointed to you. What's that mean? You don't, you don't raise the price on somebody just so you can gouge them, right? This bottle of water may be only worth 50 cents. I shouldn't be selling it for six bucks at a golf course. You want a bottle of water? There's no water here. Here, six bucks. That's gouging people. That's exacting more than what it's worth, right? But, see, it, it, but you'll go do that at, at uh, Kings Island, right? You'll go do that at... You go, to, you go to these places where they got food inside there and then you got to spend an outrageous fortune to buy food and water. Amen. Rush Limbaugh said it years ago and uh, he said, you know, you're always upset about how much money you pay per gas, gallon of gas. He said, but you realize how much you pay per gallon of water? You take these little bottles and add it up to a gallon and see what you pay in the store. Okay, that's a 20 ounce, 16 ounces, right? There's 128 ounces. So, huh? So 128 ounces in there. So that that'd be at least seven bottles of water at what a dollar a piece. Are so you saving paying seven dollars? Right? People are exacting more. Listen, I understand a guy getting a cut, making a sale, doing all that kind of stuff, but he's talking about. Taking advantage of people. These men are raising the prices to take advantage of people, not to earn a living. That's why they're doing all that. Look at what he says in verse 14. Here we go. You ready? This is going to slap us hard upside the head. Verse 14, the soldiers likewise demanded him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do no violence, or do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely. Be content with your wages. Oh. can't do that. 
We're living in America. It's get all you can get, man. I got to have the American dream. God said, be content with your wages. I ain't content. I got to have more. 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 Right? We can't be content with our wages. Because I'm worth more. I'm worth more. I ain't doing that. That's a menial task. I had one guy say one day, he said, I don't get paid enough to do that. I wish I was his boss. I just said, you're right, because you're gone. <laughs> See you. Right? One guy said that to my bo- other boss years ago. He goes, he said, I ain't doing no flunky work. He said, I don't hire flunkies. He said, so any task I ask somebody to do is not flunky work. So if you think yourself a flunky, you can leave because I don't, I don't hire flunkies. Right? Amen. There ain't no job. It don't matter. You say, well, I'm not going to scrub a toilet. Why not? You got no problem whizzing on them. Right? Why can't you clean them? I can't believe you said that. Hey, listen, we got no problem making a stink. Or we got a problem cleaning our own mess up. Oh, I forgot, we don't stink, right? (laughs) Hello? Amen? We make messes, we ought to have the dignity to clean them up and clean up after ourselves. Put things away, be decent in order like God told us to be. But no, we're just all full of disorder. We just throw things wherever we want to throw them, right? Right? What happened to decent and in order? Didn't God say, isn't that what we're supposed to be? Well, then why is our life in disarray? Why is our houses in disarray? Amen. There ought to be some order. Listen, we're a Christian. There ought to be some discipline. There ought to be some order, right? We ought to be content with our wages. Well, you don't understand what I make. I don't, don't spend more than you make. Right? Well, I can't keep up with everybody else. Thank God for your little $100 buggy that you ride around in. If you can't afford it, right? Hey, man, be surprised. You'd be surprised. Listen, if you can afford it, spend all you want to spend, right? I don't care. That's not the issue about what you have. It's the desire to want to have more, not satisfied with what you got, right? Listen, I said this years ago. At work. You know how I got over that thing? My boss, I heard him say that. He told the guy, he said, be content with your wages. I go, man, you, you know how much you're paying out there for all this? Stuff? He said, you need to be content with your wages. I got to thinking about that, and I said, you know what? He's fair. He's a good man. Right? He's doing what he believes is right, running a business. I'd hate to have the responsibility to have to pay everybody's bills and pay all the things that he does and does all that. I said he's fair. The problem is I want more than I make. And I get, I, I want, I, let's see, how did I say it? I said, I have less than I want and more than I deserve. Amen? And that really helped my mind. I have less than I want, but I have more than I deserve. And what I had to do is learn how to live with what I had. And operate in with what I had. And make decisions in with what I had. Not what I don't have. And what people are doing is they're all worked up about what they don't have. And what they are not. They're worried about their hair. They're worried about their body. They're worried about how they look and appear in front of people. Their reputation. They're worried about all kinds of other things instead of taking care of the vessel that they have presenting it very respectable before other people, being neat and clean and organized and doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. And you're going to find out when all this thing's over, less is better. Guarantee you. There's some women's houses. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be mean. There's some women's houses. I would not want to spend 72 hours of my week having to dust every little thing they got in their house because they just got so much and I just can't imagine just polishing and, and just pulling it down, you know, just just dusting and dusting and dusting and dusting and dusting and dusting. And dusting. I, I said, I couldn't handle that, right? i just rather dust and I'm done, but I ain't doing it, right? Unbelievable. But 
That's what some people want to do. And if that's where they get their pleasure, then dust away. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Be content with your wages. Let's look in uh, Hebrews. Man, this guy, he said, share your clothes, share your food, be content with your wages. How would that go over in America today? That wouldn't go over very good, would it? You said, what are you doing, preacher? I said, I am running off everybody that won't listen to part two. Because part two is going to be really good if you hang in there with me. Amen? I noticed that a lot of my videos, part one, they don't make it through the introduction because you'll have like 100 views on part one and then on the next one you'll have 16 views and that's where all the meat's at and they miss the meat. Amen? Hebrews chapter 13, watch it. Verse 5, let your conversation be without covetousness. You say, what's covetous? What's covetous mean? What's that mean? You don't really want? Yeah. Well, ain't that what they say to the kids? Ain't that a way a child's raised up? What do you want for your birthday? What do you want? Right? What do you want for Christmas? Right? What do you want? Well, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. That's the whole thing of the world out there. That's what makes the wheel go round out there. God said, let your conversation be without I want. He said, how do you know he said that? Look, look, look what it says. And be content with such things as what? Is that your case? For he said, I will never leave thee nor. Let's go to Psalm 23. I mean, I just trying to help you. John the Baptist preached against covetousness. You know what those people are doing? They're, they're burning down buildings and stores. You know what I say? Vacate the area, go relocate somewhere else, and let them do without. And when they want to call up, get some auto parts, they say, sorry, your store's burnt down. We don't have any. Not available because of your riding. Your car's just going to have to stay broken down in the driveway. You're just going to have to learn how to walk and hitchhike. Right? You're going to have hoof it disease. Don't expect the government to come in with millions of dollars and build you a new set of projects and put you in a bunch of food, right? They want Bernie Sanders, right, the socialist. You know, he thinks long lines is a good thing, people standing in long lines. Yeah, right, uh-huh. Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, right? I shall not... Mm. Sounds like when you got God, he changes the covetousness of your heart. It sounds like when you got the Lord and he's your shepherd, you're satisfied. Right? So it doesn't matter if you don't have all the play pretties the world has out there. Right? So you wouldn't have to line up on Friday, Black Friday, and get there at 2 o'clock in the morning so you can go get the newest, hottest item coming off, right? You don't have to have all that. And you don't have to throw a fit because somebody didn't acknowledge you and buy you a present, right? You say, well, nobody loves me, dude. Well, who'd you buy a present for? For no reason. No motive other than you genuinely love them and care about them and you go out of your way with no special occasion and you show up and you say, hey, I was just thinking of it. Here's a card and here's a gift. No reason, no governmental promotion, no commercial reasoning. I just wanted to do something for you to show you that I appreciate and I loved you. No strings attached. It's because I just wanted to show you that I really care. Just out of the blue. To me, that's showing somebody you really love them instead of having a forced holiday out there and a woman standing at the door, where's my Easter Price candy and my two dozen roses and my diamond ring from Kay's jeweler? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen. 
I love her. I try to take care of her. I'm sitting there, my arm in a sling. I said, let's go for a ride. We'll go for a ride. She said, where are we going? I said, I'm going to get you a new car. Amen. No, we ain't. I said, yeah, we're going to go looking. We found that thing. We got her one. I said, why? Because I want her to have something nice when she drives to their meetings and does all that stuff. She's going to people's houses. Amen. I said, let's go try to get you something. Because I loved her and I cared about her. I wanted to do something special for her without her having to say, how many times do I got to keep driving this piece of junk around town? Amen. <laughs> Tried to prevent all that. Tried to give her something. She likes her little car. Well, amen. Hello. I'm trying to be reasonable. I'm trying to be smart. I try to take care of missionaries. I try to do all that, but I still try to be satisfied with it myself, right? And be satisfied with such things as I have. It's a hard thing. You got to sit back. I mean, your flesh, you got to fight the flesh and say, it don't matter what you want, son. It's what does God want, what he has. It's all that matters. You don't need junk. I'd like to downsize. You guys want to help me downsize? Amen. If I had the money, and I'm not being covetous, I'd be, I'd, like where we stay for our little anniversary things, it's like a one-room type thing with a little bathroom on it. I'd love to have my bedroom, my office, my kitchen, my dining room, all in just one big room with a separate little shower and a bathroom. And man, just that's all I need is one room. I don't need all that other stuff, right? To where she can sleep in bed and I can sit there and I can read and study. We got two lazy boys sitting right there. Man, we'd be happy as pigs in mud. Hey, Amen. I don't need much, just a little cabin. We don't need much at all. But somehow the world thinks I, I'm supposed to have all that. I don't need all that. I, I want to I wanna downsize. I want to get it. So I know my downsize is coming to the nursing home. I understand all that. but <laughs> Right? We work hard for all that stuff out there, and then we die anyways, and we leave it to somebody else, right? Then whose stuff's that going to be? You're going to have people fighting over your stuff, selling your stuff at garage sales and doing all that other kind of stuff. People don't really care about us. You understand? That's what matters. Man, how'd I get off on all that? Content with your wages. Uh, covetousness. Look at, look at uh, James chapter 1. And I'll finish out Sunday school with this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Man, if we could get that. The Bible says we brought nothing in this world and carried nothing out. Be content, right? Paul said, godliness with contentment is great gain. If we can be godly and have contentment, that's great to gain, right? Paul said, whatsoever state I'm in, therewith to be content. You know what's wrong with that crowd out there? They're not content. They're not content with themselves. They feel they have an inferior, oh, that's a good sermon. I'll have to bring that. They have an inferiority complex. Amen? It's all inferiority and superiority. You are inferior to God Almighty. He is superior to us. And we must needs be subject. Like the Bible said in Romans 13, we covered Wednesday night. Look what it says, James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. Man, I cannot believe I'm in the middle of this now. <laughs> right? I mean, you fall into it. It's like falling into a briar patch, and now you're being stuck everywhere. And you go, oh, man, I'm snagged, I'm stuck, I'm bleeding. I mean, oh, God help, now there's snakes. and there, Right? You fall into it. Look what he says. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Now, that's, that's when them cuss words want to roll off your tongue. That's when you want to punch and break things. Hello? Amen. That's when reality's setting in and you're in the flesh now. You're going through something and your faith is being tried and you want to, you want to solve the problem in the flesh. That's not the answer. You say, what's God doing? God's peeling back the layers of your onion. Amen. A layer at a time. He's just peeling back the flesh. Why? 
Knowing this, to trying your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect word that ye may be what? Perfect. An entire what? Wanting nothing. You know what those folks are out there? I'll tell you this right now. They're impatient. They want something for nothing. They want to bypass the work. They want to bypass uh, making a living and saving money. They want to bypass the proper channels and they want it all now, today, the way they want it, how they want it, and they want it all in one lump sum right now. They're demanding success and they, they're demanding to be delivered out of their circumstances right now. They have no patience. They said, we're sick of waiting for something to happen in our life and we're going to take it into our own hands. They're not perfect, they're not entire, and they're wanting. They're, they got nothing inside. They think material things is going to satisfy them. They think burning down their country is going to satisfy them. They think no cops is going to satisfy them. They think no rules and regulations is going to satisfy them. They think taking your wife is going to satisfy them. There ain't nothing going to satisfy them. The only thing that can satisfy them is a humble heart towards God Almighty and submit and say, God, your king. And I'm without you and I'm empty on the inside and I need that peace that only God can give. And I take your son and his faith and his peace and I take him as my free gift to wash away all my sins. And I'm going to completely trust you. And if I go to hell, I go to hell trusting the shed blood. And I'm telling you, that's what will give that guy peace. Then he gets up and he says, now talk to me through your manual. And you show me what this book says and I'll live my life accordingly. And any way in my life that's wrong, I will change it to honor this. Then you're dealing with a new person. Right? I want to honor that book. I want my life to line up that book. And now I want to line up with rightly dividing. I want not only want that book, I want to find out what's for me. There's a lot of religions out there that's taking all kinds of things that don't belong to a Christian. And trying to implement it, force it on a Christian when it's not for a Christian. I want, what a Christ, I want to do what a Christian is supposed to do. Do you know how many churches specialize in Pauline doctrine? Very, 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 very few of them. I want, to, I want to follow what Paul says to the church, to the body of Christ. I want to make it the best of my ability to be what I need to be for him and be content with what things that I have, be content with my own skin. Right? Amen. Brother Rob, you dismiss us from Sunday school.